Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe and the notification bell so that you never miss any of this content. And I will also ask you to please consider sharing this video out there. If you see it on social media, give it a like or give it an upvote on Reddit because what I'm going to go through today is some of the common scams we see on top of Cardano that are out there trying to scam people out of their ADA. After that, we'll also go into looking at some of the projects that are launching on top of Cardano. So we see lots of projects out there already looking to launch. And I think once we get smart contracts, this is going to go tenfold. And also we're going to see a lot of scams trying to launch just to get in and eventually rug pull. So I'll give you a look at some of the due diligence I do, some of the things that I look for in projects. And you can use that as kind of a starting point of the first questions you should ask of a project before you decide if it's something you want to take a risk on. I'll also show you then the opposite side of that on how easy some of these scams can actually get set up and look fairly professional for only a few hundred dollars. They can get white papers created, get their native token, get their websites, everything like that set up very, very cheaply on the likes of Fiverr and lots of other websites out there as well. So I will put timestamps down below and any questions, anything you feel should be added to this, Please leave it in the comments down below as all of that will hopefully help save a lot of people, their ADA and other cryptocurrencies as well. So let's jump into it. Okay, so starting out here, this one here, when I started doing the research for this video, this was a common scam over on Twitter. Every time I posted with the hashtag Cardano, I got bots commenting about bonus Cardano when you go to it then, basically they're trying to get you to click onto a website that will double your ADA or something like that. The hard cold truth is if something sounds too good to be true, it is too good to be true. No one is going to double, triple your Cardano just because you send them your ADA. Again, if someone ever does a real giveaway, then you don't need to send ADA to them first. They can just send you whatever the giveaway actually is as well. Scam websites, scam live streams. This is a very common one. Unfortunately, I've seen a lot of people get caught by this. So where they take one of Charles's videos and they live stream it out there, they put a website on it and you go to that. And again, they say, Charles is giving away a million ADA or a billion ADA or whatever it is. And all you have to do is send 500 and we send you a thousand back. All of that is complete bullshit. Even I went on to uh, YouTube just before this and typed in Cardano and you can see here's a live stream here if I go into this I can see that there are supposedly eleven and a half thousand people watching this again That's all bots. It's just the way they've set it up What they do is they hack other YouTube channels take over them So it looks legit then to people on the front end put up a website like this And then again, this is the website here where they'll try and convince you to send them your ADA So again, be extremely careful of stuff like that fake wallets as well so again if you ever download a fake wallet and you put in your seed phrase into it or you create your wallet through that as soon as you send any ADA to it it's going to be gone the hackers will take it so again this one here was very convincing there over on the play store so they set up a mobile Daedalus wallet right now there is no mobile Daedalus wallet Daedalus wallet is a full node wallet so you need to install it on your laptop your desktop whatever you have but you will not have a mobile version of that. In the future, there may be a light client, but right now there isn't. So just be very careful where you download the wallets from. Again, I always say, if you want to get the wallets, go directly to the website. So Uroi is one of the most popular wallets for ADA. So again, uroi-wallet.com is where you go to get this. When you come over here, you just click this download and you can see it gives you wherever you want to get the wallet what for whatever device you're using, whether it's for your browser plugin or whether you want to get it for the for an Android phone or Apple. So I have covered some of this type of stuff before I put out an article here and done a video on this on some of these security aspects. So looking at passwords, using multiple emails, VPNs, two factor authentication, uh, browser security, some bits about the wallets using hardware wallets, which is something that I always feel adds that extra layer of security. And then again, talking about some of the common scams, which we have covered here, apart from Telegram groups, most Telegram groups that offer 
to give out tips and all this type of stuff as well on trading tips and everything like that. Generally, none of that type of stuff works. YouTube comments as well, you will see on a lot of YouTube videos, you will see all of this crazy kind of stuff where DM me for to advice on what trading manager you should use or all of this type of stuff. So you can see they've done this under my name. They were all scam comments and you see this under every YouTube video as well. So what you want to see is this black symbol around the owner. And again, any YouTube channel out there is not going to offer you a WhatsApp number to get onto them or offer you trading advice or all of that type of stuff as well. And one other thing just to show you on that as well. So you will see copy profiles over on Twitter. I've had to go to a different browser to show you this because what they do is they set up copy accounts like this. And to anyone looking at this, it looks very similar to my own proper profile. Apart from what they done was they changed the L in Paul to a capital I. So again, it looks the exact same here when I'm looking at it. But when you start to go down through the profile, you'll see all they do is share other people's articles and posts. They don't actually put anything up themselves. And again, if you ever get a message out of the blue from someone on Telegram looking for funds or anything like that, then more than likely it's going to be a scam. I will never reach out to anyone personally offering any types of services like that. So now let's take a look at some of the stuff that I look at when I am considering getting involved with a project as well. Okay, so we'll start out here looking at the different types of sales. So I'm taking this back to where a project is raising funds, not where they are already trading on an exchange. The following questions after this will be more so for them types of projects as well. But first up, types of sales, types of ways that projects look to raise funds, ICO, is an initial coin offering back in 2017, 2018. This was the go-to funding method for both legit and scam projects because what they done was they thought of an industry and they put blockchain on the end of it, raised millions and millions of euro, very, very, or dollars, very, very easily by setting up a website, setting up addresses, setting up ERC20 tokens. And again, I would say 90, 95% of them were worthless and were, Lots of them were complete scams from the outright. IEOs then was the next evolution of this. So this is initial exchange offering. This is where the exchange handles the full sale. So again, the exchange is the trusted third party, but it is centralized. So it means that anyone who wants to get involved in the initial sale of the token that is launching, you have to go onto the exchange, send your funds in there and you buy the token on the exchange because they handle everything there. Next evolution on this then was the IDO, which is the initial DEX offering. So this means that there is no centralized third party that handles the funds. There are different platforms out there. We have OccamFi, you have Cardstarter and Vent Finance as well that offer IDO platforms. So projects that are trying to launch can do it through their platforms. They handle kind of the KYC and all of that type of stuff but the actual sale of the tokens then is done through a smart contract. So you send your funds into a smart contract, which then sends back the token for the project that you're getting involved in. STO is another one you might see thrown around there. Not really that popular. I did think it was going to replace ICO back in 2018. Didn't really take off, but we may see this again at some stage. So this is a security token offering. So this is was supposed to be the evolution of an ICO where the actual token would be registered with the SEC in America. So it means that they are declaring from the front that it is a security and then US investors can get involved as well. ISO, ISPO, initial stake pool offering. This is something we're starting to hear a lot more about on Cardano. So this is where you get, it, get involved in a pool a project is raising funds, so they do it through setting up stake pools or using other stake pools. And instead of paying you back out the ADA rewards you would get for staking your ADA, you get back the token that the project is, is offering instead. So I will do a full video digging deeper into the ISO model. That will come up soon, but just so you're familiar with these terms. So considerations before getting involved in a project, things that I personally look at. So who is the team? What is their track record? So have they just appeared overnight? Have they just dreamt up an idea and suddenly thought blockchain is an easy way to raise funds? Or have they been involved in the space? What have they built in the past? What have they actually done? So looking into this will give you 
a good idea on what to potentially expect from them going forward. Look, it's not, they don't have to have this huge successful record, but it's always a positive to see success there and to see a lot of experience in the space. Advisors as well, so who's put their name behind the project? This is generally people who are very knowledgeable in the space and they are advising the project. I will say there's lots of sellouts out there that are advisors and basically they sell the rights to their name. So you'll see lots of people are advisors for multiple different projects, but in reality, they don't do anything for the project. They are just there to put a name to it. So take a look at the advisors, see if there's someone you respect in the space, you don't see them involved in a lot of projects, then chances are they see something in the project that might be worth looking at. What stage of development is the project at? So are they just an idea or do they have an actual working prototype or working code? Is it a work in progress? Where is it actually at? Because obviously something that has a working prototype or has a working product is going to be a far better investment than something that is just at the idea stage. But again, you do pay different amounts to get into this. If you're getting into something a lot earlier, there's more risk involved in it, but then there's more reward if it pays out. Do they provide GitHub to check the code? So can you actually look in to see what the code is? Does it work? And again, I would say, look, a lot of people or most people out there aren't going to understand the code, but then within Cardano, we have a lot of technical people. So there's a good chance that someone else will have looked at the code. So just go out there and look to find them reports. Does the team have Haskell experience? If you're building on top of Cardano right now, then you need Haskell experience. So again, does the team have this? Do Are they competent enough in that to actually build what is needed? How unique are they? So being unique and not being unique can both be an advantage and disadvantage. So again, it's specific on the project. So if it is a completely unique idea, you haven't seen it before, the first question you need to ask is why has no one done it before? Is there a reason that this isn't going to be a good idea? And on the opposite side, just because it isn't unique doesn't mean it can't be a successful project either, but you need to look into the finer details. With the likes of DEXs on top of Cardano, we see there are 10, 15 DEXs, maybe more at this stage, all trying to be successful. I would say there's some of them already that I'm thinking they're just not going to make the cut, but then there's lots of them out there that are doing individual features. They're not just going for the straightforward swap features. They're trying to put in a lot of extra features and that is where you can gain a competitive advantage. Other considerations, tokenomics. So how much has been sold to the public? So again, look at how much has been released out into the public. How much can the public get involved in the sale? Sometimes this can be very small up front and then there can be a lot more being released to the public through things like providing liquidity to the project and everything like that. What you want to make sure is that the team and private investors don't own the big majority of the tokens. So again, there will always be private sales. Projects, if they're going to get to the stage where they're ready for market, then they're going to have to take on early funds. But what the important part is to look into the private sale details and is there a vesting schedule? So what this means is basically that the private investors don't get, and the team, don't get all of their tokens on day one. They should get drip fed their tokens, so five, 10% of their tokens every month or every quarter or something like that. So it means that they don't get everything day one and they're not incentivized to dump on the market if it is two, three, four X what they got involved at. So again, this is an example of a token release schedule. So you can see on the bottom, Generally, the public sale tokens are available from day one. And then things like the private sale or seed or the team tokens are gradually released over time. Now on to Fiverr.com. So Fiverr.com is actually a brilliant website for businesses to get anything done from graphic design to websites, to tech problems, to video animations and everything. But like that, they offer absolutely everything. So it can be used for good and for bad. So when you start to look down through here, results for cryptocurrency ICO is what I put in. So I'll make you an amazing ICO cryptocurrency promo video. That's fine, lots of projects need them. Uh, here this guy will create an ICO website for 80 euro, he'll create an ICO website or a crypto news website, very cheap website to get up there. Uh, what else do we have? Cryptocurrency promotions, promotions, ICO token sale. So again, create the full token sale website, 115 euro. There's other ones then as well. If I look up 
I'll be an advisor for your ICO and cryptocurrency launch. Not sure who it is. But again, like I was saying on advisors, just be careful on that as well. So if I come up here and I put in white paper, so again, write an impressive cryptocurrency white paper for 45 euro. So again, they will make all of this type of stuff up. You can see here, these will create a white paper as well. ICO, IDO, STO, IEO, some of the acronyms that I mentioned earlier on as well. A white paper for DeFi. And then I actually looked up this Cardano dev here. Now this guy might be legit in creating the actual native assets, but you'd see that he will create a native asset for you for 221 euro. So that will be your token created. So you actually have a legit token as well. So I'd say just be very careful. Again, when I look into Cardano, there's lots of different things that people will create for you as well. Create the token there as well on the blockchain. And that's cheaper actually than the other one. So again, that's not to say that some of these sellers aren't legit in terms of creating stake pools or tokens or any of that type of stuff. But just be careful, be aware how easy it is for scammers out there to create a very professional looking profile and not have much behind the scenes themselves at all. So again, looking here, Cointelegraph, if you come over here, so I don't know what this project is, it's just a random press release that I checked. But again, when you're reading down through this, you look, okay, this looks legit. And again, I don't know what the project is, so I'm not saying that this project isn't legit. But as you go down through it, you come down to the very bottom. This is a paid press release. Cointelegraph does not endorse and is not responsible or liable for any of the content. Basically, what they're saying there is if someone is willing to pay enough, then they can put whatever they want on Cointelegraph. And this is very similar for most of the news agencies out there. So be extremely careful. Just because your favorite publication puts up an article about a new project doesn't mean the project is legit. Hopefully the information that I have given you here will help you doing your own due diligence. I'm going to probably start digging into individual projects a lot more and using lots of the due diligence here and putting out videos on the results that I get from digging into them projects. If you have got some value, please do consider sharing this out there. As I say, I want to save as many people as possible from getting caught up in a lot of the scams that are out there and save their ADA. Give the video a like, comment below. If you are new and like this type of content all in around Cardano, please also subscribe and tell a friend. Thanks for watching guys and I will talk to you soon.